All right, SEC championship game. Um, you know, obviously, um, it uh, it's exciting to be able to play for conference championship. Um, you know, we've uh, you know certainly uh, feel like uh, we've earned the opportunity to be here um, by the play on the field, and uh, we're excited about the opportunity to represent uh, um, SEC West and uh, playing the number one team in the country. Um, Georgia's again proven themselves to be uh, the best team, and um, we're excited about that challenge. Uh, we know it's going to be a, um, a tough challenge, but we're, we're certainly uh, up for um, this chance to um, to win the SEC. And that's what you play it for, and uh, I know our guys are excited about it. Um, again, it's a, an outstanding football team. Um, you know, there's there's so many superlatives. You know, whether you go on offense and and talk about Stetson Bennett, or you go defensively, uh, and you talk about you know some of the biggest defensive linemen and most active linebackers um, with Johnson and, and certainly uh, inside with um, Carter and Beal. This is just a well coached, um, consistent uh, football team. Um, but our guys have, you know had the opportunity to play the best, and uh, this is another opportunity uh, for us to be challenged. And so um, we're excited about the opportunity. So with that, we'll open up to questions. Um, first, just to check on Jarek Brown, Converse, what his status is. And also, you know, this was always kind of a makeshift year at corner. I guess, how would you evaluate it now you're 12 games in on how that that group did a lot of moving around and whatnot. Well, we're playing for the SEC West Championship. I think that's a a, a pretty good answer to that. But uh, Jerk is um, he will practice um, on Tuesday non-contact. If he gets through that non-contact practice, then he'll be fully cleared. So we're expecting that uh, he'll be back for us. Um, yeah, I, mean, I, I think our guys have done a really good job. I mean, you know, putting together a secondary when you didn't have one um, is not where you want to be. And, and I thought that they've, you know, really uh, hung in there all year. Um, you know, we've used a number of guys at that position um, to hold it down. And, you know, obviously the latest with Jay Ward playing the corner. And, and he played really well. Um, so really proud of the fact that we've been able to move new players into those positions and, and you obviously get us to the SEC West Championship. Coach, right up the middle. Uh, could you give us an update on Jaden? Uh, you did yesterday on the on the teleconference. Yeah, today. nothing more. Um, I'm sorry. Could we get it in person just for the TV sake? Sure. Yeah. So the update on uh, how do I start? To, to, is, can you give me a? <laughs> I got it. I, yeah. Right. Give me that for some plays too when you get a chance. Um, yeah, so he's been evaluated. He's in a walking boot. Uh, you know, we'll keep him in that boot today, and then tomorrow he'll go in for his exam. And really, this is about you know strength. Um, you know, he'll go on the Alter G today, so he'll run uh, with no obviously uh, force and keep him conditioned even through today, which is a weight training and film study day, and then. Uh, Tomorrow, he'll go through a manual exam where uh, effectively he's got to be able to get up on his toes. You know, if he's able to do that, um, then we're ready to go for Tuesday. How'd I do? Good. Thanks. I have a different type question. So, uh, uh, It's a good problem to have, obviously, but uh, some coaches in the past have said how playing in the championship game makes it difficult with the early signing period, you know, with recruiting and stuff like that. Is it compounded by the, where the transfer portal is is now? And how, so, how are you dealing with it? Like I said, again, you want to have this issue, but yeah. it's still an issue. No doubt, um, there's no question about it. So, you know, our situation is different because you know most teams that are not playing in a championship game are out on the road recruiting today, and certainly we're preparing for the game. So, you know, we can't be out recruiting at this point. So, you lose that opportunity, but. Recruits know that we're preparing for a championship game, so you, you gain that back on the other end. Um, next week is where it really gets interesting, right? So the transfer portal opens on the 5th. Um, you know, we've, we certainly uh, you know, want to be able to recruit, uh, but we want to obviously set our own roster as well. 
So it's balancing setting your own roster, evaluating your team, exit interviews, doing those kinds of things, um, while you're also recruiting and keeping an eye on the portal. So you've got a few balls up in the air next week. And then our guys are in exams. So, you know, it lends itself to where we don't have to be hands-on. We can turn them over to our strength and conditioning staff. It's just a matter of balancing um, how much time we spend with the guys in terms of one-on-ones so we can set our roster, who's coming back, who wants to go to the NFL, you know, who may want to go in the transfer portal. You know, all those things we have to take care of and set our roster here at LSU as well as look at the portal and we got to recruit those that are coming in as mid-years. So three balls up in the air at, at, at one time next week. I've been able to ask you this question a lot this year. Uh, you've apparently played a lot of teams from the SEC. You played Georgia recently twice. Yes. Um, impressions of playing them when you did in 17 and 19. And yeah. then also, uh, do you take anything at all from those games for this week? Um, not really. I mean, structure defensively is very similar. I mean, you know, certainly the, the personnel is different, but structure is the same. You, you, you know what you're going to get offensively. Um, they're a little bit different with coach Monken. He's, you know, he's got a creative bend to him. That's a little bit different than what they had in 17 and 19. Um, but you know, there's, there's similarities there that, uh, you know, we take as a crossover more than anything else. And, Again, this is then, this this then becomes you know how do you handle like, you know Brock Bowers, you know how do you handle some of the matchup situations that that you have to deal with. The quarterback is totally different, and you know I, I think you know structure is one thing in terms of knowing what the structure looks like, but then you have to game plan against individuals, and I think that's where this becomes a little bit different. Um, coach, obviously, you've been around a long time and watched plenty of SEC ball. Said coach, that long games time. yeah, a long time, Thank you. many years. Um, when you joined the SEC West then, and you thought about what it was to go through a year, how does that compare to now? I guess what was the biggest takeaway from being a head coach in the West? This past weekend, you know how you have to bring your best each and every week. If you don't bring your best, um, you'll get beat. And, and so I think that that, to me, more than anything else, is the takeaway. Um, you cannot play without the energy and the identity of your football team. Uh, there's just too many talented players. And if you're not ready to play uh, and play at your best, um, you'll get beat. That's the SEC West. Uh, Coach, what would it mean to win the SEC championship, you know, regarded as the top conference in America, especially after what you inherited and the situation you were in a year ago? Yeah, I think it would be um, obviously something that uh, we would all feel great about in our first year here at uh, LSU. But I think, you know, overall, it's hard to win SEC championships. It's so hard. I mean, there's so many good teams we've just talked about how you have to play week to week in the regular season. But to, to get there and then win it all, it's um, – that's why somebody asked me yesterday about um, do you think that if they expand the playoffs that uh, an SEC championship would be devalued? And I said, absolutely not. You don't know what you have to go through to actually get here. Um, and, and that's why I think it would never be devalued and it would be such a huge thing for this football program. Brian, uh, down here. You've talked, obviously, a lot this year about processes, and that's kind of been like the key to your program in, in general in this season. When did you feel like maybe the players had finally kind of adopted those things and those things were clicking in terms of, uh, I guess, off the field processes and all that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, I, I think it's like anything else. You know, when you, when you put in a, a new way of doing things, new standards, um, it's like anything in life. You go to a new business or a new operation, there's a new way of doing things. Um, you know, that just takes time. I, yeah, I don't know that we're there yet. Um, I think the first year is really, you know, setting those standards, making sure that they understand. I, I think we're, you know, we're at that level of, you know, conscious competence. You know, we, we, we know what to do. We know how to do it, but it's really hard for us. A and we want to get to you know, where it's unconscious confidence. We don't have to think about it. You know, it's just we do it, and we do it the right way every day. And 
Um, I think it's still a process for us. They, they understand it a lot better. So I think that's where that level is. But we still have another level to go. Hey, Coach, uh, right here. You're going up against a, t a six foot seven, 270 pound tight end this week. How do you combat that? Hope they don't throw it to him. Is that what you mean? Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, sometimes, you know, we break this game down to, um, you know, one player against one. You're hoping that in some situations that your zone coverage where you have somebody underneath them over the top. Um, because really, I mean, if you look at it, if, if it's just a one-on-one -on -one situation, he's a pretty, you know, unique athlete uh, and that he can line up at, and has lined up at wide receiver. Um, that's not a great matchup for anybody. So, you know, you've got to take some of those things away. You've got to be able to help with underneath coverage, over the top. Um, sometimes there's bracket situations where you know, you've got a corner with an inside backer and a safety, and that triangle kind of takes away throwing lanes because if it's just as simple as one guy versus one guy, that's not a favorable situation. But you may get that sometimes, and um, you're hoping the pass rush gets there. You're hoping that um, Stetson can't find him, um, you know, things of that nature because it is a matchup issue. Down here in the front. Uh, more big picture for the first year. Could you maybe cite a couple things beyond the coaching staff and the managing the roster, just a couple things that you implemented new to the program this year that in retrospect you think were really effective, you're glad you did? And on the flip side, um, how, what was it like to try to decide what not to change? Because obviously it's a very strong program. Yeah. Um, you know, you never really touch um, – tradition, but you don't worship it, right? You bring tradition along with you. Um, and, and that is you, you make sure you're, you're welcoming uh, former letter winners, uh, former players, um, those that have been, you know, part of building the, the pride and tradition of LSU. I think that's absolutely crucial, you know, to have guys back that um, have helped win championships here. And I think we've done a really good job of doing that. So, Without worshiping it and, and falling in, into that kind of, hey, we have to do it this way because it's always been here. Um, but, but paying attention to those that help build the program, uh, I think that's one way that I think we've done a really good job. And I think the other way is, is much more you know, day to day in terms of, you know, we have a thing called SWAT teams where you know, I think that's standard and, and setting a standard so our guys knew what the expectations were, you know, and on a day to day, they come into our building and we're not throwing them curveballs. They know exactly what they're getting. It's a consistency every single day. And I think that that creates an atmosphere within the building um, that they can trust. And, and so I think that those two things in particular, really welcoming our former letter winners back, those that have been instrumental in building this program. Uh, without get caught up with, hey, we did it this way, we got to continue to do it this way. And then internally setting up our, our SWAT teams. Do you worry again or, or protect against a letdown after losing the game last week and I guess for all intents and purposes losing a, a playoff shot? No. No. Um, the, the least uh, concerns I have is, is uh, a letdown. We didn't play up to our standards, and so uh, our guys know it, and they care about that, and you could sense it and feel it uh, over the last couple of days uh, from after the game in the locker room to um, yesterday when they had to be here for meal, um, even today in the training room. Uh, our guys know they let something slip away, and they're, they're upset about it, and they know how they have to play. I mean, we, we don't have a margin for error. We have to play with grit. We have to play with fire. We have to play uh, to our identity. And if we don't, you know, we're, we're not the kind of team we need to be. So I think they're anxious to go back out and, and play up to their standard. Um, and, and that's the way I, I feel that they will play. Could you go into further detail on Stetson Bennett, what you see in him as a, as a winning quarterback, a consistent player? Yeah, I think when you turn on the film, he just exudes confidence. You know, he's a guy that has mastered the position in, in what 
Coach Monken and, and certainly Coach Smart are asking him to do within that offensive structure. He just, you know, he, he, he moves around with confidence. Um, you know, he's only got very few rushes. You know, he's not a guy that's looking to run, though he can run away from you in the Auburn game. You can see him accelerate and separate from some defenders. Um, but he wants to get the ball to his playmakers. Just a smart, uh, careful with the football. Um, yeah, he, he just, I think the confidence level that he brings brings up the level of confidence around him and all the playmakers that he has. Uh, Coach John Emery had a rough game against UAB with the fumbles and then comes out and scores three touchdowns for you this week. Can you just talk about, as his head coach, uh, the ups and downs you've had with him and the electric stuff he can bring to a game like this, but also the, uh, the need to protect the football against a Georgia defense that's probably going to try to rip it out? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, I think it's pretty well um, chronicled that, you know, our depth at the running back position is is not where it needs to be. And, and so, you know, you've got to be very careful. Um, you got to make sure that John understands that, look, you can't continue to put the ball on the ground. But yet, on the other hand, we can't put him on the shelf uh, because he's he's got to help us. So. You know, I, I thought he handled himself pretty good. I think Coach Wilson's done a great job of dealing with him in terms of the mental aspect of preparation and how to do this with uh, a concern for holding on the football. But we got to get the best out of him because, as you know, he's he's a very talented player with the way he played this past week. So it's been a it's been a balancing act a little bit. Um, we get Josh back this week, which will help. Um, but I think I think more than anything else, I think. Um, you know, Coach Wilson's done a really good job of balancing that, you know, discipline of carrying the football with we need you to play big for us as well. In the uh, third year in a row, George is in this game. In, in what way might that be an advantage for them? I don't know that it is per se. I, I think that their team, you know, clearly – you know, has themselves in a mindset that this is where we should be and we expect to be here and we expect to win. And, you know, anytime you, you face an opponent that's confident and believes they're going to win, you've got to beat that. You know, you've got to go ahead and take that from them. It's like, you know, playing the Alabama teams, you know, those that believe they're going to win football games. You know, we were 1-9 and nine against uh, Alabama, you know, in the last 10 games. They believed that they were going to beat us and we had to go take it from them. And we'll have to do the same thing you know, with Georgia. This is a team that believes they should be there and they should win the SEC championship. So we have to overcome that as well. Staying on Georgia, just their defense. Uh, obviously, Kirby's done a great job of, you know, building them into what they are consistently as well. What do you see when you look at them on tape? Well, you know, certainly, you know, physical, you know, the defensive tackles are outstanding. Carter and Beal, um, you know, I think, Look, I, I think it's pretty clear that what you'll see is the perimeter players not only are athletic, but they're outstanding tacklers. And that doesn't surprise me from, you know, coming from what Kirby does and, and uh, you know, obviously what he demands from his players. They're tough-minded. They play physical. They play downhill. Um, and, and they play a three-down, four-down, which, you know, we're, we're obviously seeing a lot of it, but, you know, you got to make sure you minimize the negative plays against a defense like this. You know, you could get into some bad plays, and now you're behind the chains. They get you to third down. You know, now there's a lot of things they can do. So first and second down, and, and eliminating negative plays against this defense in particular is is really big. Ryan, uh, you mentioned you know running back depth not where you need to be. A lot of things in the team are not where, where you need to be, and yet y'all are in this place. Would you, would you have looked at this team from afar if you if you were looking at this team somewhere else and said, man, that they're, they're, they're not probably going to be able to get get there, and yet here you are? Well, we needed to we needed to play um, we needed to play to our absolute best when our best was needed, and we did. Um, I'd like to say that for the entire year, but that has not been the case, and. A lot of it is we have some work to do in terms of building up the depth of our program and certainly continue to build our process. And, but I will say that they have given us everything. When the lights have come on um, and the, the, their best has been needed, 
uh, they have given us their best. And you don't know that until you get around a group of guys um, in terms of what kind of fight they have. This group has a lot of fight. That's why they'll go to Atlanta and they will fight and they will play hard for four quarters and they will give everything they have against the very talented Georgia team. Brian, you kind of talked about this a little bit yesterday, uh, Todd Monken on the Georgia side. Obviously, I'll go way back to Grand Valley State. Yep. There's a lot of kind of connections. I mean, John Jancic on your, uh, when your analyst was there yeah. last year and go back to Grand Valley. Cortez. Uh, Cortez, exactly. What, um, I guess, how close are you still with some of those people who you started out with at Grand Valley? Obviously, Mike Greenbach's on your staff, but some of the guys who, how, how, how did you kind of stay close with them throughout your tenure with the, or your career? Yeah, Chuck Martin at Miami of Ohio, you know, was, uh, was on my staff. Um, you know, a lot of those guys, um, Look, you know, when, when you come up through the Division II ranks and you have to learn how to do all the laundry as well as uh, hand out meal money and do those kind of things, you know, you build a relationship with all of those coaches um, that you carry with you through, you know, your, in, your entire career. And so, you know, we always stay in contact. You know, John Jancic played for me, you know, and, and um, you know, tho those are the kind of things that um, – you never forget when you, you start in Division Two and you don't have the resources. So as those guys kind of ascend and, and go on to other positions, Todd and I have always stayed in contact um, and uh, spent a lot of time when he was at Louisiana Tech. You know, he loves the state of Louisiana. Um, so, you know, I, I, I think it's just that connection you have when you were at Division Two and, you know, you didn't have the resources um, that make it special. Good. Thank you.